paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's, it's not, not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, true egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, zany, politically incorrect. Your style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be you to the fullest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. Um, we have here me, Dave Kelso, of course, and we have Max Egan back again, and it's always a pleasure to have him. And we have Katerina Roy, also known as Katerina Edwards Roy, and it's obviously always a pleasure to have her. And, of course, last minute's um, arrival that wasn't originally planned, but here she is, Kristen Meyer. And, um, yeah, this was originally going to be like a YouTube live stream, but like between energetics and the elites and technology and whatever other factors are, are going into this, um, it's just, it's been real, really interesting. Like, you know, you try to, to load up the Hangouts on Firefox at the time and it claims Firefox is about to, to cut plug-in support. Well, it says that for some of us anyway. For people like Max Egan, he can go in on other people's Hangouts, but not other people's Hangouts for no reason because unicorns, because just 2017 is what it is. And Kristen was also having a hard time getting into the Hangout, even though she was using her phone, which is Android, which for all intents and purposes is Chrome, and it should freaking work. So the only people that were able to get in on the actual Hangout out end of it were me and Katarina, so we aborted that, and now we're doing just this Skype, you know, pre-record thing, and I'm going to manually render it and all that good stuff, and it's like, eh, crazy, crazy. So we're here to talk on practical application of unconditional love, because I don't know about all of you, I'm sick of the infighting, the political correctness and stuff, and it's just time to stand, stand up and say... Hey, you know, let's look at what real love is. We can all agree to disagree where we agree to disagree, and we can all work together to unite to make this world a better place, and nothing but stupid ego games are stopping us. So I'd like to talk about, you know, the paradigms that get in our way of really applying the real unconditional love, not the fake it till you make it, and move into the actual application. You know, because a lot of people think that unconditional love and compassion is this airy-fairy, Pollyanna abstraction and it's really not it's totally practically applicable so who who wa who wants to, to to start us off on on their their take on on that who who would who would like to dive in first everyone jumps to the jumps to the fore oh of course i was thinking, I was thinking, it, would be, I was thinking it would be nice to let the ladies go first but so um, I, mean, I i think unconditional love is important but it's also understanding what that is i mean like you say it's not something fluffy you know, I mean, I, I do what I do out of love, and sometimes I'm quite angry, and I, I can be quite in your face. But the reason I do that is out of love for this species, out of love for humanity. I mean, we can't allow the world to continue to be run by criminals, and a lot of this is because of our refusal to love those around us, you know, our, our denial of what's really happening to our brothers and sisters. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's important, but uh, I'd like to hear the ladies', uh, the ladies point of view on it. Okay. Well, the unconditional love thing is something that I have had a lot of practice with in my friendship with Dave and in my relationship with my husband. And it's been recently that I've been learning how to apply it just with people in my everyday life uh, beyond just my interpersonal relationships. And, and I feel like the idea of being able to have unity on this planet, on, to be able to have unity within the different communities we're a part of, there is a distinct need for this application of unconditional love because a lot of us have very differing points of view and we have different places that we're coming from and different life experiences and different, um, different backgrounds overall. And 
the idea of being able to to respect one another and seemingly be able to get along seems to be kind of lost in this world nowadays that I, I've been seeing just a lot of division that happens just for no apparent reason, you know, people taking offense. And, um, you know, this past political season was a complete show of that. And we still are even continuing it on now today, just in a different way. But I feel like this need for unconditional love is something that is really doable, as I've demonstrated in my own relationships over and over again. There's this distinct um, sense of acceptance that is pervasive in the application of unconditional love. And people seem to think that unconditional love is something that we can't do as humans like no that's that's reserved only for jesus like oh that's only reserved for people like the buddha or krishna or whatever you know people who are ascended and higher and not their lowly selves with all of their divisive thoughts and everything but um it, it is something that you can practice and the way that i like to practice it is just really by looking at the other person and realizing that they have the right to be themselves and that there is a place that i can get to within myself that looks at that person and sees that they are worthwhile, even if I don't agree with them, that they are here on this planet for a reason, even if I don't agree with them. And even the elites, even the people who are crazy war criminals and just completely batshit crazy, uh, they, they also have their place. And it's kind of really amazing to be able to get to that place of just understanding that they have their purpose and their function and, you know, for all intents and purposes, God's using them in his own unique way and for his own unique purposes. And I can't say that they should be extinct from the earth, like even though they are crazy terrible. So I can. that's, yeah, you, you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like Max's idea of just sending them all off to an island and if and give them the opportunity to get along with each other. And if they want to kill each other, then, you know, that's not on oh, us. that would be like the worst family reunion ever. <laughs> it kind of oh, would, wouldn't it? You know, the thing is, you know, like with these, these people, I mean, I, I, I look at Hillary Clinton and I, I can love her as I love any human being. Yes, that's but, the unconditional um, love I, part right there. Yeah, but I, I don't expect that I can love her into doing the right thing because she Not has morals or compassion. It's it's, <laughs> it's no point wasting that energy and directing it to her. I would I would look at the people that she's hurting. I love them just as much as her, and I will stand up against her to prevent her from hurting other people. Um, that's, and that's it, it's totally the same thing, you know. If, I, if I'm a, if I'm attacked by a psychopath, I mean, I will I will defend myself, but not out of hatred for the psychopath. I'll do it out of love for myself and the people that this psychopath is 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 affecting. Exactly. If, if you so have, it's if, it's knowing the practical application of of counter violence and when it should be applied, and and to not do that sort of thing from a state of anger or hatred towards the perpetrators. Right. Totally. Because then you're perpetuating it, and it's just this endless cycle of retaliation and retribution, exactly. and it just gets really messy. Exactly. So I think it's really important to make that distinction when you say you've got to be, uh, you know, have show love for these people. Absolutely, you can show love for them, but I think we're far too tolerant of their actions. Mm-hmm. I don't think we should be so tolerant of what they Yeah, do. for the uh, record, that's yeah. not what I was saying. I was really yeah. speaking more in your direction oh, yeah. as well. So yeah, I, I have just think plenty it's... of. I think yeah. I can. I think I can. I think I can give a simple clarifier. When when the rabid dog needs to put down, the vet doesn't have hate in their heart when they do it. It's right. not. It's not like, Ur, I'm hating. Ur, rabid dog. Ur. They're not filling themselves with this cancer of hate, but they know that if they don't put the rabid dog down, that 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 dog is going to be a massive danger to to itself and everyone around it, and that there's just no other course of action in that moment. Um, well, that's, cri- that's, that's, that, that's one way to look at it, you know, with a rabid dog. But a rabid dog is kind of in a in a state of, uh, you know, out of control. Yeah. What about when you've got people that are in control? You know, like the analogy of um, if you're on a if you're on a lifeboat and you're heading for an island and you've got a lifeboat full of people and families and children, and someone gets up and starts rocking the boat and people start falling overboard, how many people do you allow to fall overboard? before you throw the guy rocking the boat off the boat. Yeah, totally. My na- my analogy was just to, to make mm. the point that you don't have to fill your heart with hate while you're doing what needs to be done. That was literally yeah. my only point. My yeah, only yeah, point. Exactly. Now, Kristen, exactly. Kristen um, let's be fair here and uh, let Kristen say a few words. What do you think this um, unconditional love stuff is, and um, how do you think it should be applied? What's, what's your perspective on what all that's about? Okay, well, um, a lot of 
my perspective um, about how it, it goes with the greater world was covered by Max. I agree with a lot of that. And same thing with Katarina. Um, and I, I like that. Um, by the way, someone's calling in. If you hear a beeping, that's what that is. But um, <clears throat> basically, my own personal experiences with unconditional love are, they are pretty personal to me. What I've gathered from a lot of them is that every single person has so much inside of them, um, so much of everything, so much pain and love. And well, I wouldn't say everyone has love, but everyone's got a lot underneath the surface and not all of it's good. And we're compl- we're complicated and intricate people. Um, and what it's been for me is that you have to be able to um, separate your idea of what you want someone to be for you from what they actually are. And people aren't always going to fit into your mold of what you think is the most perfect thing. Sometimes it means they're going to disagree with you. Sometimes there's just going to do things that you really, that really want to make you scream. But a lot of it's just letting control go and realizing that even if, you know, what they're doing isn't good for them, they have a right to do that and learn from their experiences. And in the long run, that's the best thing because people have a right to make destructive decisions and learn from them and sometimes that's the only way to learn you know that's true i think the big problem that we have is, is we we project these weird expectations on people that that are created from you know our own insecurity seeing as we do live in a very repressed um <laughs> enslaved society and when we feel that we can't bring our, our full selves to the surface, then obviously we're looking for authorities, we're looking for gurus, we're looking for babysitters, politicians, so on. So people put all their love and support behind these corrupt politicians when really they don't even realize that all, all they're all they're looking for is that is that love really. I mean, they're looking for that love and acceptance, and because they're not getting it, they they get sucked into these you know oh bow to authority figures blindly blindly believe them about everything and, and so on, and we have the the mess that we're in. Um, I also think that because of all these insecurities, we have a massive addiction to at least the idea of appearing correct. As if appearing correct in front of our peers and so-called superiors and whatever, as if that is like the one singular only important thing ever, period. Which is also why there's all, all the fighting online, even between people in the truth movement, spiritual movements and whatever, are supposed to be allies. Um, an interesting experience that I think all of you witnessed yesterday, or at least Kat- and Katarina and, and Kristen did. I'm not sure what Max was doing, but... On Facebook, I just posted a thing about exactly how and why we all need to stop fighting and that the people who claim that they have informational and awareness superiority, that I'm just going to hold them to a higher standard because they're holding themselves to to, to a higher standard. And a a few people got offended by that. They They felt attacked by a post that I was saying, let's not attack people. And they felt attacked by that. The funny thing is, is the people who felt attacked weren't even a part of any spiritual or truth or whatever movements or whatever, just, you know, regular people. And the ones that felt attacked, they actually surprised me the most because they were the ones that I thought would be least likely to to feel attacked. And they ended up being, being the most likely. So I think even the idea of, some, of, some, of someone just saying, hey, let's all get along. That comes off to people as, what, you mean, you're, you're telling me we're not getting along? Are you accusing me of something? Ha, ha, ha. You know, they get all angsty even if you say something positive. You know, that's why I tell people, oh, regardless of what you say or how you say it, some people just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy and people are just going to take things how they take things. That's not your fault. You didn't cause that. Um, so the only thing you could do is just be loving back to them and just say, hey, you know, you're coming at me at a point of misunderstanding and, you know, if you want to keep coming at me at that point, that's your choice. I'm not going to fight with you or hate you or whatever, but just let you know you're coming from a point of misunderstanding and everything just, it was civil, even though there was a, there was a bit of butthurt, uh, everything was way more civil than, than I thought it would be and it actually surprised me. Oh, and supposedly uh, on Easter, you know, just a few days ago, uh, the Schumann residence hit 90 hertz. 
Uh, what do you all think are, uh, are the implications of that? I personally think there's quite a bit of unconditional love and all of that, you know, implications. And even even in the in the negative context, like Max said, sometimes unconditional love is expressed as as yelling and screaming and hell no, we won't go when enough is enough. So what do y'all what, what do y'all think of the Schumann res- resonance thing? I don't know what I, that is. Um, Max, do you want to explain the Schumann resonance, or should I? Well, the Schumann resonance is the is the the cavity resonance of the Earth, really. I mean, I'd like to to find some evidence of of it going up, but I mean, I've heard whether it's been going up and going down. I mean, I don't know. I'd I'd like to find some way of confirming it before I was willing to comment on it. Yeah. Well, it's still okay to have an opinion. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I think that we're we're connected. I mean, everything's energetic, and so we're, if if the resonance is rising, then of course we're rising with it, and everything on the earth is rising with it. Um, what that means is anybody's guess. But uh, as I said, I'd like to have confirmation. I mean, I've I've felt things are very very strange energetically lately. There's there's definitely changes coming, or there's something happening. I mean, everything has been very very strange energetically, and everybody that I know is feeling it. Maybe it's just because I'm in LA at the moment. It's really weird here. I've got to tell you, but. Uh, <laughs> I've been having a lot of energetic crazy too, as have we all. I mean, this is yeah. the, the first time I've been nasty sick since 2012. So, no, even the people when I was in Hawaii were, were feeling the energy was changing. Something, something's different. You know, things are really starting to come to a head. Mm-hmm. This whole political situation, yeah. the global situation, everything's coming to a head, and nobody's really being fooled by the global situation at the moment. But uh, and there's all sorts of stuff happening, like you say, to squeeze us out and do uh, like all the trouble we had connecting to this hangout and everything today. So. You know, there's so many things going on. You notice they're squeezing us out in YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. They're just changing all the algorithms so you can't share stuff. That's how they're doing it. They're not really closing people down. They're just kind of sweeping people away off into the distance, really putting them behind that. the curtains. Yeah, I, I, I did a search for one of my films yesterday. I was sitting here with Ben and we were doing an experiment. I went on YouTube and I put in my name and one of my films, and it took six pages before I got to, actually got to my film. I got to everybody huh. else's up, upload of my film, but I didn't get to my upload of my film until the sixth page when I put my name in with it. Interesting. So, you know so what I, even if people are searching for my film, they'll find the film, but they'll yeah. find it on another channel that will not have the content that my channel's got. You know what I'm wow. saying? So they're doing everything they can to try to squeeze people away and squeeze people out. I had one woman had to subscribe to my channel 14 times in one day before the subscription would take. I've been, so, I, I, I've been, I, I've been bumped off your channel a few times in the past. Not so much recently, but in, in the past I've had to keep resubscribing as well. And um, by the way, according to YouTube, and when I saw this, I, I totally laughed. Apparently, according to use it, to YouTube, Max, the name Max Egan equals not advertiser friendly content. So I take that as a compliment if I were you. Really? <laughs> yes. Interesting. You know the the, the last hangout we did. Yeah. Um, it was monetized and everything, but then it got kicked up in the system. And I mean, the video's still there and all that, but it's it's in yellow. The little dollar signs in yellow, and it says that it's not advertiser friendly content. It's like, oh, and, and there and there's a there's a thing I uploaded just a montage of some of some of your opening stuff, and that isn't advertiser friendly content either because the word Max Egan is in there, and and a and, and a Ma- Max Egan to the to the elites is like a cross holy water and garlic. Apparently, they want nothing to do with it. Well, interesting. <laughs> I wonder if that's because my YouTube account isn't isn't monetized. I mean, I've never monetized my accounts, or whether it's just my name. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's just your name, I think. I mean, you're you're like really the only Max Egan floating around that I know of. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah interesting. You're, you're just like you're, you're like holy water on the digital faces of the elites. <laughs> interesting, interesting. I mean, it's really one of the most suppressed channels on YouTube. I think um, it really is. The what the amount they delete my subscribers, I see them drop my view count. <laughs> like I've got I've got my my film The Awakening is uploaded to my channel. It's got ninety thousand views. Um, someone else uploaded it to their channel like just two years ago, and it's got 620,000 views. Wow. So <laughs> what has it really got on my channel, you know? Um, I've really got to wonder. So they, they really do suppress it, and they, they try to slip it under the carpet and bury it under the rug as much as they can without actually closing it down because that would attract too much attention. Yeah. By the way, just to let you and other people know, there's there's a site that's been up for about as long as YouTube called Daily Motion that I also use and – um, their monetization is fair. They don't politically censor. Um, if any glitches happen on the site or something accidentally gets taken down, you could talk to a real human being, and they're just like, oh, sorry, that happened by accident. Here, your video's restored. Thank you. So um, Daily Motion, 
um, has has been a, a really cool place so for me personally to upload video it's not quite as advanced as, as YouTube of course but um, I think that it's it's good enough for for a lot of things as far as what people are mad at YouTube for and are tired of certain crap being pulled and Daily Motion doesn't doesn't pull it they're a French company okay yeah well anyway we're getting back onto the topic I mean I yep. think the fact that they are censoring so much stuff. And repressing so much stuff shows that maybe maybe the energy is rising. I mean, maybe people are becoming more and more aware, and so they're having to take more and more steps to reduce the availability of information to people. Yeah, totally. And you know, they're doing all these little subtle things to try to to try to get people fighting. And the only the only thing I I could think think of for the reason that things happened the way they did yesterday in a more positive way is the rise of the energetics and unconditional love and all that. Because in the past, that situation that I had on Facebook would have been a disaster. Um, it would have had everybody arguing and yelling at each other and, and, you know, the usual kerfuffle. But that didn't happen. Everybody was just, like, chill, even though they were a little butthurt. Um, everybody was just, like, chill and civil and, and respectful. So let's hope that that continues as a, as a global trend. And as far as what, what you were saying about, you know, it's no secret any anymore to the way the world operates. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of people that are still in, in denial just because it's hard to face, but the only reason they're raging in denial is because they really are starting to see it. And it's like, oh, God, I don't want to look at that. What's, like, too late? What's been seen cannot be unseen. Yeah. Totally. Katerina, Kristen, um, um, either of your thoughts uh, continuing on unconditional love and the state of the world and, and, and how we can just kind of navigate, uh, you know, through through this stuff as it continues to get more interesting and keep our, our wits about us and not, not lose our integrity and to continue to remain in our authenticity. Um, your thoughts? Well, if Kristen uh, doesn't have anything right now or doesn't want to go yet, I'll talk. That's cool. Yeah, okay. Um, I think I, the most helpful thing I can do is just share what I've been doing and how I've been navigating all of it because, you know, I have been getting more and more after a lot of years of being more of a hermit and, uh, being more introverted and doing all of my deep reflective work myself and being in Costa Rica and all the different places I've lived. Like I've now been feeling called to come back more into the world and be a part of communities this year. So I come into contact with a lot of people, um, a lot more often now. And I've been noticing that I have been developing my own ability to really stay centered within myself as I'm going around with other people and, being being subject to their energy and their perspectives and their beliefs and their opinions and their ideas, which often are very different from mine. And um, I, I have been finding that it's helpful to, like I said before, you know, to be able to, to respect their right to, to have their own opinions and their own views and, and to know also that when they are doing stuff that just does not feel right to me. Like I'm, I'm very connected to my own heart. And when I feel that something's off about a person, I'm, I'm very quick to uh, look at that and decide whether or not I want to continue to stay involved with this person. And, and it's not out of maliciousness anymore. It's not about hating the other person. It's just about understanding what is beneficial for both parties at the time. So, um, you know, you guys were talking about it in terms of like the elites and stuff, but on a very practical level, like what do we do with the people who are quote unquote, like the elites in our own lives, you know, the people who are kind of tyrannical or narcissistic or abusive in any capacity. So for me, um, I've just been sensing more and more deep inside of myself, like who is somebody who actually is, is beneficial for me. And so I'm been taking steps to be able to not have to spend time around those people because like, like I said, like, well, Max said earlier that you can't unconditionally love somebody out of being crazy and narcissistic because they still have free will. They can, they can do as they please. And, um, you know, we can inspire and, and help open minds with unconditional love, but ultimately it's the choice of the other people. So we don't want to make ourselves doormats in effort to love people at the same time because we still need to take care of ourselves and be loving towards ourselves and to be respectful of our own boundaries and our own limits and our own capacities. So um, that's, that's really how I've been approaching it, Dave. So what about you? Kristen. Beautifully said, beautifully said, Katarina. 
Thank you. Totally. I, I, I fully and completely agree. And, you know, I think Katerine also makes a good point as, as far as on the comparison to, you know, our, you know, regular, you know, average person life, uh, narcissists and control freaks versus the elites and how they, the, you know, the, we, we've kind of inherited that situation from the elites, right? As above, so below right, and all that. Exactly. And, you know, I also think that, a big part of the problem is, you know, again, putting people on, on pedestals and these labels and stuff like celebrities are just regular people. And you've got as much of a chance of bumping into them as anybody else. Case in point, just the other day, Katarina ran into um, Tyler of Aerosmith in the grocery store. My point <laughs> in mentioning it is these are just regular people. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we have to imagine ourselves as celebrities looking out of the celebrities' eyes, and if we can successfully do that, guess what we find? They're just people within their career field. Just like you've got teachers and doctors and lawyers and firefighters and baggers at Walmart and whatever. And we just we, we get these opinions about these career fields and we, we begin to think that one is more valid or righteous than another. And then we put the position on a pedestal and then we put the person on a pedestal and we end up inadvertently surrendering our our own power to false authority and mm-hmm. i think that this is a big problem uh what do you think Kristen? i i think i know that you have at least one or two family members that are that do a, more than just a little power tripping and are caught in that uh, authoritarian meme uh what do you have to say say about it and and how have you handled it Kristen? like how have you gotten through it i, I know it's been hard well to be honest i've had a big problem with um Taking it, you know, taking like perceived authority figures in my own life, and usually they're like certain members of my family, or um, just I've been, I would really um surrender my power to them in a lot of ways, and then kind of play the role of the person who beats herself up over every little thing. And compassion for others, um, for me has only become real when I really have a sense of compassion for myself too, because for the longest time I kind of lied to myself and I would say me doing everything for everyone else is a good thing and it's me being loving but under the surface resentments were building up so much and I felt completely depleted and I felt completely alone and and I've been really coming to face that a lot recently so now it's like it's really hard for me to put into words as of where I am right now but cultivating a sense of you're 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 doing you're doing a great job Kristen. don't worry about it just speak for, speak from the heart say what you need to say and it's cool you're doing fine um just a sense of compassion for all the different aspects of yourself all of your feelings and then once you do that you can look at someone else around you and not explode on them um for the parts of them that you disapprove of it's like i've noticed that every time i have a hard time accepting something about someone else and not necessarily tolerating it, but accepting it, um, point where I don't, if I like, if I didn't accept something that someone else was doing, I would go and I would destroy everything. And that's hard to describe, but if it was a relationship with someone, I would sabotage them and myself over it. Um, and what I've realized is that everything I've disapproved of in other people, there's been something that I disapprove of in myself that it brings up. Um, and that might not have as much to um, relate to with, like, the elites and the political situations where, you know, people are just sitting idly by and giving their power away. It does. It totally does. You're, you're, you're right on point, Kristen. Keep going. Well, okay. It's like, now I'm getting to a point where I can see that sometimes these things that have been happening in my life, the resentments that have built up, they've been because people have been walking all over me and people have been doing things they shouldn't have to me. But then other times, you know, I'm seeing that a lot of that's because of my lack of boundaries and um, my unwillingness to be there for myself. So I'm looking to others to fill the void and looking to others to validate me on every level. And so everyone's disapproval, if it's there, cuts way, way deeper than it should. And I've been my harshest critic. And now it's like I'm tired of every time that I criticize myself that harshly and I sabotage myself, it's sabotaging everyone else in my life. And the unconditional love that I'm coming across is letting myself be myself to the point where I'm taking advantage of what's in front of me so I can help people. And 
instead of criticizing every little thing I do and how I'm not where I want to be right now, like, I'm thinking of it in terms of potential wasted now, because so what, I'm not perfect. I can still help people in the way that I can help people right now, and who's to say if I don't go, keep going now and take action now where I could be? And a lot of my standards for where I should be and where others should be aren't even my own. They're just shit that's been forced down my throat. And now my compassion is so deep that even when I'm in a moment where I'm really disapproving of myself or someone else, my hatred for the system that has made people the way they are is deeper than any disapproval I have for another person. It's I'm learning where to channel the anger and the disgust and the disapproval instead of towards myself or the people that I really love. And that's way different. I'm not pretending I don't get mad at others, but I'm trying to peel it back and see what's producing it in, as far as the whole system. See, and Kristen right here is just a total evidence of the shift and evidence that it's all just regular people. So many people think, oh, well, you're not shifted unless you're some super high guru or or you have a PhD and an MD in spiritual sciences or, you know, blah, 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 blah. When really what people need to need to hear from is people like you being regular people and just being authentic and honest and just, you know, just being like, look, this is this is what's up and enough is enough. So I think that that everything you said there, Kristen, was freaking perfect. Um, your take, Max. Oh, yeah, I'm a very regular person for anyone that ends up listening to this. I am <laughs> so imperfect and not even any sort of guru or, guru or anything. And I wish that I could speak better. But you speak same, better than you I'm think. Realizing that it's, I'd rather speak from where I'm at because there's a lot of people that are like me that can't always speak super eloquently, and they. You do though, Kristen. They want that, something that can. You do. Like some kind of hope, something that they relate to. So that's good. Match, would you please tell her that she speaks very eloquently because it, when 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 I tell her, it doesn't seem to hold weight. <laughs> so. No, I, I got what you were saying perfectly well then, then Kristen. I really did. I think you said it really oh, well. I'm, about that, thank you. <laughs> so don't stress on that. It was lovely to meet you last year, actually, at uh, the Rock the Farm gig as well. I do remember you, so it was lovely to catch up. Hey. But um, yeah. I see some of. The, I've done whole shows about some of the things you've, you've spoken about there. About you, you, you bottle up your emotions, you bottle up your feelings, and you get stomped on all the time. You, if you don't express your emotions when they happen, when you feel them, uh -huh. you bottle it up, and it comes out in other ways later. You come, you end up with stomach problems, you end up with this and all that. There's all sorts of things, or you start attacking people for no reason. All this sort of stuff that we do. And the difference between tolerance and acceptance, you know, these sorts of things. But yep. something you said there that, that I, I, I would point out to you, when you said um, your hatred of the system over, over far surpasses um, uh, any other thing that you feel towards the people or whatever, what about superimposing that and not having hatred for the system at all? I mean, I don't, I don't hate the system. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the people that the system is infecting and hurting. Um, and I do what I do out of love for the people, out of love for myself and out of love for humanity, not out of any hatred for the system. The system is an idea. It's a meme. What perpetuates the system is our tolerance of evil and our, our, our unwillingness to support and respect each other. And the system is just this thing. It's just a meme. It's just an idea. You can't direct hatred at it. It's an inanimate object. It's, it's going to suck you dry if you direct hatred at it. You can rechannel that rather than feeling any hatred towards anything. Do it out of love for yourself and out of love for the people. And realize that you are perfect at being you with any imperfections you have along the way. These are just parameters that the system gives you, but you're perfect at seeing the world from the perspective that you've got. And it's what you do with that perspective. Now, what is perfection? You know, we're, we're out, out for this, this you know, thing that we think perfection is, but there is no real perfection except the perfectness of having the unique perspective that you have and what you do with that information. You know, so, and it's all about the journey. It's about the journey. So it's what you do with the little pebbles and the little things that you gather along the way and what you can build out of that, you know? I totally love all three of you guys and you all speak so beautifully and, and all three of you, of course, have, have moments where you're kind of hard on yourself because that's how humans roll, but you know, that happens. But I just, I just want to say, I, I just, I love being on with you, Max, and with you, Kristen, and with you, Katerina, and I, I just think that so, so far, this is a, a really awesome call, even though it didn't go, you know, the whole live stream way like we wanted. Um, it's still really, really awesome, and just, I, I think it's, it's really important to me, especially for, for all of us to be talking the way we're talking right now, because. 
you know, we are, we all, we all kind of, we all kind of look up to each other and we influence each other and, and it's all a positive thing and we all kind of help each other work out our issues just by being ourselves, not, not, not because we're, we're seeing each other as broken and trying to fix some broken thing or whatever, but, you know, it really come, we, we're all speaking out of this place of love and this place of authenticity. And like you said, Max, you know, love can have sadness, love can have anger, love can be middle fingers all over the place. It's, not a Pollyanna thing, and and this show or episode or whatever you want to call it, um, it, it's I think is a perfect example of what unconditional love is and the application of it. You know, it's not about going into Pollyanna denial, fake love and light and whatever. I'm, I mean, there is such a thing as real love and light, obviously. I'm talking about the, the fake, you know, but none of this is this is just so real and so authentic and so human. And I think it's it's what we need right now. We don't need political saviors. We don't need spiritual gurus. We just need real fucking people willing to talk. And this is exactly what this is. And I love this so much. And I I want to do this so much more. And I, I know that everybody's got their schedules and we line up when we can. But that I just this is so I just love this so much and I'm I just really appreciate all of you and I'm when you when you guys come on I'm just I am really thankful and I'm really filled with gratitude. You have a beautiful heart, Dave. You're you're a beautiful man and thank you for what you do, brother. Th th thank you, sir. I mean, I've I've been listening to you probably since you started, since you know when when you could actually customize YouTube and. You know, back back in the good old days of it, I, I'm if I haven't been listening to you from the beginning, I've been listening to you from almost the beginning. <laughs> well, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I hope the shows have, have helped people. You know, and it it does get difficult. I mean, you get trolled. I mean, I, I lash out at people. People come and attack me on my threads, and I, I I give them I give them a mouthful back. I do. But even doing that, I mean, I do it out of love. I do it out of frustration. I just get so frustrated out of doing this for so many years to have people still coming and attacking you because you haven't. And said what they want, so they call you an idiot in their first comment. I mean, and then they expect you to not respond with, with something and say, well, you know, what are you here to offer? Something more constructive or, or what? You know, so, you know, we've got to allow people to think differently and, and allow people to put ideas on the table and just respect each other without shouting each other down all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I, 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 and you can ask. Katarina and Kristen, I do my best to deal with the trolls and stuff very lightheartedly. Like if someone, like take for example someone coming, oh you're an idiot, blah blah blah. I'll just be like, well totally, yes I am. How else do you expect me to act? Why are you wasting your time if I'm if I'm such an idiot? Of course I'm an idiot. You've got better things to do. Go do them. And they don't they don't know how to respond. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's the way. I mean, it, but it does get frustrating. I mean, and, and I I woke up when I was four. You know, I've, I've been sort of banging my head against this system for for the last you know fifty six years, and it, it gets a little tiring after a while. You know, and you get a little short tempered now and then. Yeah, I mean, we're 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 all partially subject to um, you know to the paradigms that we've grown up with, and especially the older we are and it can be you know it it can be challenging there's a, there's an old saying which i don't think is true it says you can't you can't teach an old dog new tricks when really i think a different analogy is needed it's more like the bigger the mess you've made for yourself the longer it takes to clean it up and it's neither good nor bad it just is so people that have been <laughs> caught in certain patterns, if they want to shift out of them, it takes them longer the older they are, which which is not a knock on anybody. It's, I mean, it's to be expected. Bigger messes take more time to clean up, right? It's not good. It's not bad. It just is. But if you if you clean it up, it, it will get cleaned. There, it's not like oh my god, there's a big mess. I just can't clean it up. I should just forget about it. I, it's too much. No, everybody's capable. And the bigger the mess, it's going to take longer. But that's okay. It, you know, a lot of people think. Especially as they get older, oh, oh, I, I'm not as capable anymore, and blah, 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 bullshit. You've just got bigger messes to clean up, but that's okay. Clean them up. You're just as capable as anybody else. Don't, you know, the poor little me thing is such a lie. Yeah, it is. It really is. Totally. So, um, Katarina, um, anything? <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm recovering from being sick, so please excuse my throat acting up a little bit periodically. So, Katarina, um. <laughs> your thoughts on all of this because obviously um yeah i, I talk too much so go ahead <laughs> you talk too much you talk a perfect amount dave it's fine well thank you well excuse me i'm sorry i did wake up like two minutes before we were supposed to be on this call so i'm like still sort of revving up the engines 
Um, mm, so clarify for me, Dave, my thoughts on all of this about trolls and just about like, and you've been you've been dealing with it with it recently in person from what you've been telling me, you know, and just approaching it from a more lighthearted, unconditional love space and still at the same time giving yourself permission to be angry. Because mm-hmm. I, I personally found that it's it, it, the more you let yourself be angry, the easier it is to calm down and not be angry. But if you try to do like the whole politically correct thing, um, it just builds up in, inside of you and, and just, you know, makes you crazy. Um, when a lot of these politically correct fools talk about, oh, tolerance and trying not to offend people, I, I just straight up tell them, tolerance is about learning how to not be offended. It's not about learning um, how to not offend people. Because oh, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a really tough bag right there. Yeah. I feel like I can't even just, like, breathe or open my mouth without offending somebody these days. It's same, hilarious. Same here. <laughs> Hell, I, I, I was I was joking about that with with Krista on the one message thread. I'm sure you thought you saw, you know, the one where where everybody was like was like triggered and uh, and I half jokingly because well it's also true. I'm like she she's like oh well you know you're gonna risk offending people sometimes. I'm like hey I run that risk every time I open my mouth and and she's like yeah, yeah. and she's like yeah you do and I'm like no sense denying it and she's like well if you did deny it I'd call you a liar and I'm like right. <laughs> I'm like rightly so <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, I've been dealing with this really, um, really nuts lady at work that she has just been. Oh, looks like we lost Kristen. Oh, keep t- keep talking. Yeah. I'll reconnect yeah. her. Okay. Um, I've been dealing with this really nuts lady at work that um, she has just been. You know, you say, "How oh, how are you?" And she's just like, blah, 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 blah. like and just. Everything, everything is going wrong in her world. Everything, absolutely everything. Nothing, nothing's going good at all. Nothing at all. So it, it's really interesting to have a conversation with this person because she will just derail it into a place where you don't actually want to go. And um, Kristen, you here? Yep. Just sorry. Checking. Sorry. Go ahead, Katerina. Um, just to catch you up, Kristen, she's Katerina's talking about an unruly um coworker who is just urgh, just grumpy kitty. That everything. Just grumpy kitty about everything. Victimization. Um, Poor little me. I'm the victim. That kind of attitude. Yes. And of course, I can look at her and be like, Yeah, me five years ago, I was pretty much that way. I mean, I I looked at things in that from those lenses, so I can have compassion for her. But at the same time, um, I have to pray a lot while I'm there, you know, so I center myself and I'm, you know, sometimes working three feet away from her and she just has like this, this constant outpouring of victimization. And it was bothering me like it really was because it would get to this point where, you know, I would feel deflated all the time just being around her. And I was like, all right, well, this is my this is my lesson in, in learning how to be more sovereign in my own personal choice of joy uh when i'm you know here at work like i'm i'm only working here like two days a week and i chose this job 